Tennessean Wendell Potter is an advocate for major reform of the healthcare industry, including universal health care. A speech he gave at a UT event was a major inspiration for my research stream in public health that I hope will improve the quality of health care and information to disparate populations. Potter was a senior executive with both Humana and Cigna Insurance before resigning and becoming a whistleblower in 2007 after he saw a touring free medical clinic in rural Virginia in extremely disturbing conditions. His advocacy for health care reform motivated me to address disparities in access to health information and care. I want to inform public health communication campaigns to better reach marginalized audiences with quality health information to empower them in managing their health, even in the face of the structural and personal barriers they have, such as lack of insurance or access to quality medical care. To that end, I've studied rural breast health campaigns, how federal bureaucratic structures impede the promotion of an effective local public health agenda, and public health departments, information officers' relationships with news media to reveal how they influence the quality of health information that publics receive. A major research goal of mine is to bring more audience-centered research into public relations literature, particularly in public health and crisis. All too often we focus only on organizational reputation in public relations. I hope to enable practitioners to more effectively reach publics through a richer understanding of consumption of health information. To this end, my research is focused on creating more nuanced crisis communication, management models in public relations for public health managers. A recent major interest in mine has been how to boost audience motivation to comply with response protocol issued during threats such as a disease outbreak. Most recently, I've used eye tracking equipment in the College of Communication and Information's uh, User Experience Lab to study HPV vaccination campaign messages targeting college students. I'm exploring the role of the use of fear appeals and non-fear appeals as well as text only um, to, affect how, to study how it affects intent to vaccinate. Using retinal tracking equipment, we study visual attention as participants looked at one of three ads promoting HPV vaccination. One showed um, genital warts from HPV, the fear appeal. Uh, one showed a happy patient receiving a vaccination, and the third was text only. We controlled exposure to each one. Our results show that campaign visuals using fear appeals had the strongest scores for message recall and perceived informative value of the pro-HPV vaccination messages. Participants who saw fear appeals with the message also reported the highest behavioral intentions to vaccinate. Even the amount of time participants spent actually looking at the um, ad was highest for the message with fear appeals. The participants studied the HPV vaccinations with fear appeals more than twice as long as those that, that did not have the fear appeal within the amount of time that we allotted for them. So the more they looked at the ad, um, the, the higher it positively correlated to their reported intentions to vaccinate. Both fear appeals and non-fear appeals increase participants' perceived risk of contracting HPV. And this effect was partially mediated by the extent of time they spent looking at the ad. The more time they spent looking at the ad, the higher the level of perceived threat. We can use these results to inform HPV vaccination campaigns and improve uptake. Um, HPV causes almost 70% of cervical cancer in women. It's the third most common cancer in women um, around the world. And it also causes oral esophageal cancers in men, so clearly this is an important area. Another research, recent project has looked at crisis efficacy during a weather emergency, food recall, and um, disease outbreak. Results of a national survey I did showed that married people had significantly higher crisis efficacy scores overall than those who are separated or divorced. Crisis efficacy also increased with income. The other significant demographic predictor of crisis efficacy was children. Across the food recall, tornado warning, and whooping cough outbreak scenarios, crisis efficacy levels significantly predicted people's willingness to protect themselves 
and to follow response protocol that crisis managers issued, such as taking shelter during a tornado. Theoretically, these results position crisis efficacy as a very useful predictor of audience motivation to comply with directives they receive during crisis. They also advance crisis communication research and public relations that has historically tended to focus on protecting organizational reputation and not public steering crisis. The applied value of this line of research lies in the fact that public information officers at health agencies can develop strategic campaigns to boost audience levels of self-efficacy, especially in um, disparate audiences before a crisis incurs in, in order to inform them and empower them when it does. Before a crisis occurs, one strategy for campaign messages working to empower marginalized audiences would be to include ways that they can overcome the disparities they face and access to quality medical care and safety resources by providing them with good alternative um, response protocol. After the crisis occurs, these self-efficacy enhancing messages can be tailored to reach a, reach a wide variety of publics to boost their motivation to comply with crisis directives, mindful of fiscal or medical care barriers they face, as well as boosting their confidence. In sum, I am passionate about a research stream that will better equip public health information officers at health departments to educate and activate all of their publics, both to better manage their health routinely and to uh, protect themselves better during crisis situations by reaching publics with crisis information that motivates them to actually take action to protect themselves. Thank you.